Arusan army rising. The church is the breeding grounds for raising godly men and women who are willing to apply kingdom principles and values to bring transformation to their respective societies. We need to have a national focus. We don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the Great Commission. They are equipped in righteousness. Unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know ABC and surprise others to do, but they don't do. Unless we see that. We pray for God to raise right ministers in our nations. We pray for God to raise right task collectors. We pray for God to raise right security agents. Achoo, achoo. They are bold and fearless. Standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away. But we don't quit, for we know no defeat. The agenda to possess the nations. Welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on Pentecost hour. Stay tuned in. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. If ever I choose to marry and the relationship goes sour, I shall not be trapped in it. We are hardly blind. We see what marriage has done to our parents. And to others. And we do not like what we see. Last week we said many people are yearning for living examples of people who live in harmony and radiate marital happiness and optimism. And so we ask that how do we as Christians respond to their quest? How do we prove to this lady and to the world that God is not a liar? And that marriage is indeed good. And whoever finds a spouse finds a good thing. Who will stand bail for God? Who is his witness? Who will come in defense of the Almighty? Last week we studied that the primary role of the disciples were to witness. Were to be witnesses of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Christ. That is why the Holy Spirit power came. That when they receive that power, they will be witnesses of Christ. Defending God and His word by their lifestyle. So one of the legacies of the resurrection of Christ is for us to be witnesses of Christ. The fact that he died and he rose again. And then we study that the witness is someone who has seen an event. A person who has knowledge of an event from observation or experience. And above all, someone who has evidence of the matter. So to be a true witness, you must have seen an event, you should be able to know it, and above all, you should be able to prove it. Now, if marriage is good, let us demonstrate it by our marital life. 
and let us demonstrate it. We said it's not enough to say that God is good. Let people know by your lifestyle that marriage and God. You can can say say you can't swear you can't ya. And yes, you did not come here. Name of S.S.C. You did a bravo. Any a worry pa? Etre. So we will look at today's discussion. Ene ye ba bisi ya de fufro. But let me start by saying this. Me sha see you. That the possessing the nation's agenda enjoins us to teach our members and to assess their growth and productivity regularly. Now we are not going to measure uh, our church's strength just by statistics that we have so many members, but we need to look at their growth. We need to look at their growth in terms of their productivity. So our interest in the church is not how many people are married, show me your hands, but let us look at the kind of radiation that comes from their marital line. Now, our members are apprentices, and we need to examine our members' spiritual life, their moral development, as we observe closely how they are responding to the teachings that we are giving them every day and night. Now we are discussing family as an endangered institution. In respect to the possessing the nation's agenda, we are saying that if you want to take the nations, then let us concentrate on the family. Let me make this statement to begin our discussion. It is an understandable fact that marriage was instituted before the outset of Christianity. I hope it is an understandable fact. And I want every Christian to pay attention to this. That marriage is not a Christian ordinance per se. So marriage in and of itself is not a Christian ordinance. Not something that was ordained at the aunt's outset of Christianity. When we are talking about Christianity, then we are talking about Christ and his followers. But before Christ, Abraham married, Moses married. So we are saying that Marriage is not a Christian ordinance in and of itself. Now, marriage was ordained for humanity. Genesis 2 from 18. Uh, Genesis 2 from 18. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. 
we eye mi dompe mu mi nompe mu dompe ene mi huna mu hunam we wo be frɛ no oba if e se wo yi no firi oberima i wonder how he knew ne mi won won ne se eye den ene hu yi e bi adam was a prophet i don't know ti maka se bi adam no you did for that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh Santino Barima be janina ene na ja ho na ode ne ho akobata na yire na won be enu no aye honam kro So when God created Eve she gave her to the man as the wife Unu se o Yakobon bo Eve ana oba no ode ne ma Barima no so yire Not a sister I'm for now man so no yaba The wife the man so right yire away the man no kra Straight away That was the beginning of this institution We any aware en she say ashase But this time and so sabre no even the devil had not tempted adam yet na otamfo no e me saw adam hwe so marriage is the oldest institution if you like to be kan here aware e ye nsise ana say so upon a enyini pa and it is deeply in the plans of the almighty god and god hello is that one na we e wo nyame adwini mu pa na o nyame de obuo ni ni die sronko e ma aware god wants us to live in this institution. Unyame pese ye tena awariyum. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Santi no bere man be ja ni na eni ne ja ho o de ne ho akobata ne yire ho na won be enu no aye honam kro na won be enu no na wo deda de ja o bere man no eni ne yire na wani ewu let's listen to jesus umiyentie yesu in matthew chapter 19 ehwe yeah, matthew asempa no etidu nkron i'll start from verse 3 cha se afi yimu miensa no matthew 19 from verse 3 some pharisees came to him to test him they asked is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason a pharisee fo ba ne nchen be so no hwe se obi wo ho kwan asem biarenti so jan ire ana haven't you read he replied that at the beginning the creator made them male and female and said for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh look at jesus quoting right from the beginning from genesis na say na yesu bo a won munkin kan Say free fit ya se no de obo onipa no oberima ne oba na oyo won e na o ka se ye nti na onipa be ja ne na ene ne ja ho no de no akọ fam ne yire ho na won benu no abeye honam kro na you see so jesus is quoting from genesis yesu o ka sa se mi se ne wakiro in the beginning it was not so se sa se no enti sa the creator made them male and female oba de no obo won ba ene be ma that is why a man will live and be united to the wife enti an obere ma be ja ne na ene ne ja ho no de no akọ fam ne yire so we are saying that Adam married. In your church, you say Adam or Ray. Cain married. Cain so Ray. Seth married. Seth or Ray. Enoch. Enoch on so Ray. Noah. Noah or Ray. Unless you don't want to marry. I just say, be a one person or Ray. Otherwise, it is for you. And this Saturday, I worry, oh, 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 me, yeni na. Shall we bow down our heads now? Oh my, yeah, mo. I want to pray for those who are not married. I say, me bomb pay ma mo, I'm worry, you know. And they desire. To marry. Any of power, what would they worry? That God will grant them grace. So when you come home, Mama, Adam, give us Thy grace, Lord. I will add my young Adam. My young Adam, give us Thy grace, O Lord. Thy grace, we. Thy grace, 
our Father and our God. We stand on the basis of the word that your servant has released. And we pray for all those who are in need of marriage. From the north to the south, the east to the west, unto the entire globe, we speak favor upon their lives. That you open the heavens. Anything that is covering them and that is preventing them from meeting their partners, may it be broken, O oh Lord. And may you who have sanctioned that it is no good for man to live alone, may your word speak for them. And may doors be opened unto them. And may they also find their suitable partners. We declare it done. Even in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let me say that if you don't want to marry, don't force yourself into it. Some are not just made to marry. And then sometimes circumstances also have not allowed others to marry. Don't let any pressure force you into it. But if you are praying and yearning for it, believe the prayer that you have prayed. So if you are saying that marriage predates Christianity, then it stands to reason that one does not necessarily need to be a Christian in order to have a successful marriage. All married couples living by the rules of love and understanding can make successful or beautiful partners. However, in the case of Christians, um, our marriages become no ordinary union. It is a sign that speaks to the world. Now of the mystical union of Christ. And the church. And an institution whose first foundation is God himself. Ephesians chapter 5. 31, 32. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So going back to the beginning. This is a profound mystery. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. So marriage speaks of the mystical union between Christ and his church. Therefore, for us Christians, our marital life and family lives should not only be successful, but must speak of the goodness of God. Are we together? When two Christians walk to the altar, to be joined in holy matrimony, See, heaven rejoices because their union is strategic. Heaven rejoices. Their union is strategic. And God expects from them godliness and godly offspring. Just like the prophet Malachi wanted backsliding Israel to know. Now, when Israel returned from Ezra to their land, they have lost a lot of steam so far as their worship was concerned. But Malachi wanted to bring them back 
to the covenant of worship and all that they had to do for God. And I'm saying that two Christians walk to the altar to join in holy matrimony or when you marry at home and your father or your pastor prays over it, it is married. You, you don't need to veil before God will bless that marriage. See, when two unbelievers even marry, God is interested in the marriage. Because he instituted it before Christianity. So when there is a clerical pastor standing there or no clerical pastor standing there, once it is marriage, God is interested in it. Yeah. Maybe another time I will talk about it. When you don't have money, and by God's grace, you perform the customary right. Even by law in our country, it is accepted. Just find a pastor, let them pray. And then... Take your wife home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we are not teaching well. Maybe it is our fault. Otherwise, when you perform the customary right, it is accepted by law. Find any good pastor. Let them prove it. If you want an ordinance, then see what we can do. The law can permit us in many ways to give you even those certificates. So Ebi, please, when you don't have money, don't wait. Marry as instead of burning. Ebi ana yen chere chere no ene se yeshe niye se obo modi ya koye oba no huwa diye uye na odi no kwa bebi ya wase se no ma sinsa inkra tani adi ya chukye so fwo na omo mpa ye ingo so ma wari ya no no en ti sa ana sa opa abro fudi ye nibi ya en un so ube ti mi aye hon kra tana wa wari mo mi yen fa no ma bibri en chi chire ye hon sa it's good abro fudi ye Okay, let's continue. So Malachi chapter 2 from verse 13. You did for Malachi Homano, a timiano, and you move do me and Another thing you do, this is the prophet trying to bring the minds of the Israelites back to God and to true worship. You flood the Lord's altar with tears, you weep and will, because he no longer pays attention to your offerings or accept them with pleasure from your hands. Modi nu suo ani esuo egu onyankopon afori muchi aso na onye na dwen se obetie mu esan se modi o ha oni amane ebebere aba mu ne enintem na onye mafori e no efri mu se. Ask why? Na mu bisa se edi entia. It's because the Lord is acting as the witness between you and the wife of your youth. I have not seen any record of the Israelites marrying and you needed to wait for the high priest to pray over it. But they were marrying. And once you have married, the Bible said that the Lord is acting as a witness. That's the yes. Verse 15. Yeah, Has not the Lord made them one? In flesh and spirit they are his. And why one? Because you were seeking godly offspring. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. <laughs> Now, we all need to be careful to marry our spouses well. What I like in verse 15 is this. So guard yourself in your spirit. We need to hallow the marriage relationship. And therefore, we need to guard ourselves in our spirit. And do not Break faith with the wife or the husband of your youth. 
na yan say ayonkufa eda yen en ye mrante brem yire anakunu no enta. Assistant says I hate divorce. Dunsiane say mitane awariguo. Says the Lord God of Israel. Radi Israel nyankopon na ose. I hate it. Mitri. Now. See Malachi's contemporaries. Yeah, Malachi ni mfefwod. Were distressed because God refused to accept their offerings. Na oma hakakra isanse nu nyankopon enye wanfore. As evident by his withheld blessing. Ah wo hunu no se wo nya nyankopon se mishira no eso. And so Malachi the prophet explains that God was acting as a witness against husbands who were unfaithful to their Wives. So the former like it, you say, we no yes, you know, they say, when you come I dance in here, the tear one, and you want to bring a year. Now, what does this mean? That the relationship between husband and wife is more than a commitment between two people. Yes, you know, I don't go far. Edda Okunu, and you are in terminal. A brusset won't be no any I don't go far. Malachi is saying that marriage is a covenant. Yeah, what you say. A three-way relationship in which the couple is accountable to God who acts as a witness. God who acts as a witness in the covenant. And this is for whosoever enters into the institution of marriage. See, covenant in the Old Testament entails four essential components. Okay. Number one, especially in the instance of marriage, it is a relationship with a non-relative that involves Obligations. And it is established by oath or a sign. So the marital covenant is a relationship with a non relative that involves obligations. And it is established by oath. Or vows or signs. Now, when and then please listen to this. God has the spiritual dimension to the marital life. So say God is the witness to the covenant. And if you allow him in into the marriage, he is part of it. He is the witness. When you allow him into it, he will bring transformation to the marriage. The power to transform the marriage is in his hands. Now from what we read in Malachi, we, we also see that spousal fidelity is inextricably linked to spiritual well-being. Now, spousal fidelity is inexplicably linked to spiritual well-being. You watch marriages. Couples that click. You, you see that God prospers them. Marriage must be a good repair, or else the couple's prayers will be hindered. Now, first Peter three from one to seven. Now, wives in the same way submit yourself to your own husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. The behavior of their wives. Tara na mo e yirenom, mo mre mo huwa se ema mwara mukununom, na se ebinom entie asem non soa, wafa e yirenom abraba asem eni mo huwa so, 
Now let's project the verse 2. And shall we read together? When they now wait, wait. When they what? See the purity and reverence of your life. When the men or women see. John say, "What best shame a brabo a hunti e wo usrumu se nipa e hunu a brabo a hunti e noa." Now verse three. Let's read verse three together. Yemche ni mu etoso mi ensano. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyle, man. Whoa. <laughs> there are some women when you see them outside, see hey, this is a beautiful woman, but the husband does not like her. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So you see her with a love hairstyle and some walks and some beautiful body, but the husband doesn't like that alobo jata. Teacher, only say, "Mom, ma, ma, she said, 'Yeno, enya hunam eni, mani bu awa, oshe seni anafadi eti, seni one yuni niti, kama kama kama, ni kunu slow, papa." On penisa, the husband is not fearing the hairstyle. The husband is fearing what. What has been dressed like that? <laughs> that is what the husband fears. Yeah, yeah, man, you could bo say, Your beauty should not come from outward adornment. Such as elaborate hairstyles. And the wearing of gold jewels or fine clothes. Of course, he's not suggesting that go out naked. That yeah. is not. But it's a rather. Instead, it should be that of your inner self. That is what the man is actually worried about. The unfading beauty of a gentle, quiet spirit. Which is of great worth in God's sight. Now let's read verse 5. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. This is the way they used to adorn them. Holy women and holy men used to clothe themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands. And let me say to their own wives as well. Sarah na tete no. Ma kron kron a. Wadi wan hon tu wanyan ko pon suwa no. Se se wan hon. Na wabre wan hon ase. Ma wan ara wan klunum. Na wan klunum so bre wan hon ase. E ma wan kasa wan yere no. Like Sarah. I mean, I don't think that anybody is that submissive than Sarah. For him, whatever the man will say, yes, Mira. Did he say, Senia, Sarah, Bren, who say, Emma, Nukuno, na Esun Kokraha? I'm not saying that the woman, they don't have a say. It is a union. And the two of you, we have to humble ourselves one to the other. It's not only the woman who must submit, the men must also submit. To good ideas coming from the wives. In Pesa Mitresse and Sese Obano Ekasa, Nemum, as I said, a Fenunina were brebre one once, and Mamma were very important. Number seven Tosun Son. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the. Gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Your family say, O Kronum, money won't enter in Dium, Sarah. Say, O Yere, ne a dear, ne hunya ding. Na, no money won't. Say, won't so any more and qua, watch a domino, and now we are a diffu be. Na, mon pie book wine, and see. Mon pie book wine, and see. Now, from Malachi, we also see that though there is a generational blessing, generational blessing is guaranteed if the entire household is brought into the union. That is the man, the wife, God. And if you bring the children and the entire household into it, you are sure of generational blessings. 
Then you do for Malaki Tre and Natchez say, I worry away a war. I want to a swan shira, see a bomb or then say, I do Okunu, I hear any few pound for Nina, a bebawa anymore. Now God expects godliness and godly offsprings from the union of those of us who are born again. Your Unyankopon, every fiano, a Unyamisompa, and the Mofra, what it won, a Unyamisromu. Ah, so be free our room. Now, this is exemplified in the life of one Jonathan Edwards. He lived just for 55 years between 1703 and 1758. We, you know, our friend Jonathan Edwards, a brabomu, or tenace, a fair Jonathan Edwards, probably one of the best clergyman that the world has ever known. He and the wife Sarah bequeathed godly legacy to 11 children. children children and future descendants. example teaches us that leaving a godly legacy to our children should be our ultimate goal as Christian parents. See, at the turn of the 20th century, one educator and a pastor, A. E. Winship, decided to trace the descendants of Jonathan Edwards almost 150 years after Edwards had died. Beye in Frisia or ha any dunumu a papei and as a Edward Ziwiano, papebi and so as she share na brabo and be in Frisia or ha a tremuino na nia unhuniano na and one way pa. These findings are astounding. Jonathan Edwards' legacy includes, I want to list some of them. Oh, who say papei? Now, this is the descendants. I want to just talk about the social ladder they climb. After 150 years after the man had gone to be with the Lord, one of his descendants have become U.S. Vice President. Now, want to atwa so ni muno ni pa bako ababe ye America mampeni abidi echre. Three U.S. senators. Ushemu na wumu basa ebe ye America omaino mrasebe jafuo. Three governors. Emu basa so ebe ye amantam aswafuo. Three mayors. Emu basa ebe ye mensing aswafuo. 13 college president like VCs, vice chancellors. 13. 30 judges. 65 professors. If you move in, you say, Mumako, Mako, and you see a num, a bay, a disia, mu, a cunning. 80 public office holders. Na a mumako, Mako, and you watch. Hundred missionaries. Na ushemwa na emoha ebeye asempatre edumayefo. See, I'm not enthused about the high social ladder they they climb. Pe we no mabrabo a wabo eni abodi ya udwa wonya e wo abrabo mno eno nyanya mi wawa dodo. I'm saying they climb because we are just talking of 150 years after he's dead. So by this time. The offsprings are still climbing. And so because of the foundation they stand on. Number two. The foundation they stand on. Next week, I will take time for us to look at the foundation Edwards and the wife built for their descendants to stand on. Now, I want to look at the 
And then we will encourage ourselves to build strong Christian families. We will be possessing the nation. When we start possessing our homes. Shall we just rise to our feet if you can? What did the Almighty tell you? Just close your eyes. Then go into the recesses of your heart. If you are married, is your marriage a witness? So of the goodness of God. If not, let us pray God into it. Let's ask God for wisdom to take practical steps to build strong marriages and beautiful families to his own glory. He's expecting godliness and godly offsprings from you so that our children will not be amorous, street children, not at all. Shall we pray? Thanks for listening to today's word. Subscribe to our social media handles for life-transforming messages.